Hey Dave, how do you feel about comics? I like comics. Where's Coast Avengers? Dave's a still man and I am real. Good morning. Hello. Oh man, it's been a nice week. Yeah. It's, it's been a week. It's been a solid seven or eight days. Yeah. Oh, uh, hello everybody. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers. Uh -huh. We just wrapped up our third little trip up the uh, California, Oregon, Washington coastline, drive Corridor. line, corridor. Stopped at a bunch of comic shops, went to a few antique malls. We go, we went to the secret spot. Yeah, Dave's secret spot we can't talk about. Well, we can talk about, we just can't say where it's at because yeah. it's a pretty cool spot. Yeah. I, I was a little skeptical at first, but I'm like, damn, this is, this is fun. Yeah, this yeah. I flew down to Oakland and then we made our way up via car, you know, four wheels, honk honk, yeah. and stopped uh, all these places, checked all these things, and um, we got a lot of books. Yeah, we got quite a quite a few. Um, you got you bought a, a long, at least a couple short boxes worth. Yeah, uh, yeah. But these are some of our favorites. We just want to show what we got. Um, books that were on our lists and things that we kind of came up with after this. Yeah, and, and everything that we got came at a bargain price, whether, yeah. whether it was a dollar or a little over cover price. Yeah. And uh, I think that's part of like what our trips are about. It's like, there's lots of books that are out there and there's lots of books that we want that aren't like crazy key issues, but we're always looking for like, you know, good value, good condition, good price. I yeah. think that's kind of what it, you know, our mantra is. Almost. A mix of both. That's how we started with, with collecting. It's like, you can buy your new books. You're always going to get those at cover price, but it's finding the stuff that came out maybe in the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, maybe the 90s. You want to you want to find that those books for a dollar, two, three, four dollars, whatever. Yeah. West Coast Avengers, day one. We are over at Nostalgia Collectibles, me and Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> and we're going to start our first official digging day here in Eugene, Oregon. Nostalgia Collectibles, we were here in May, I believe, uh, May or June of, of this year, and we started here back then, and today we're gonna start here. I think they open up in a couple minutes. We'll see what we get to dig in. Nostalgia. I say we start with uh, one that we were both looking for. Yeah. Silver Surfer Black, number one. Actually, I picked up most of the run it's a book that's so cool. Like this is one of the oh, coolest yeah. books I've read in a long time. The art in this book is phenomenal. It's just otherworldly. It's so perfect for like this cosmic universe. It's Trad Moore. Um, he's just doing cool things with comic art right now. Yeah, Trad Moore, written by Donny Cates. Yes. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're familiar with current Marvel, you know that Donny Cates is top tier writer right now. But Trad Moore, I've been following him since he started with um, the Strange Talent of Luther Strode in. Image Comics, so that was about 10 years ago or so. And uh, he's super prolific in what he does and he does not do a lot. So we found these books. These books are actually like harder to find than I thought they'd be. Like, so we were looking for these books for like all summer and yeah. I never found them there. And they don't go for a lot, but we were able to find these for cover price, which was nice. <laughs> Book three is especially cool. Like the cover on this is one of my oh, favorite yeah. covers and the art inside of it is just, it's, alien cosmic weird psychedelic acid trip it's so cool and yeah. it's so perfect for like this character and what he's doing yeah you know even when we weren't hanging out like i've been trying to find this book and every once in a while you see the store for 20 bucks i'm like yeah it's not it's not there yet no. it's not a book that should be like on a wall yet it, no. like you should still you should still be able to find these in in bins it was yeah. cool to get these for the cover price i agree with you bow, 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 bow. I used to live in Portland for a short while and I wanted to go to Floating World Comics. Floating World Comics is known for having probably the largest selection of independent comics, stuff that has very short print runs that is done maybe 500 at a time. And I picked up this very interesting, wild, crazy, weird Birth of the Bat by Josh Simmons. This is a book that I found out uh, courtesy of our friends at Cartoonist Kayfabe. This is a very X-rated, Batman spoof book. I don't know how to explain it other than that. I mean, his bat nipples are kind of <laughs> telling of what you're you're getting. Uh, yeah, you're getting well, in they're, store. They're, yeah, they're erect bat nipples. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hilarious. Uh, I was just happy to go to Floating World and support them. 
like I said, lived in Portland for a little bit. If you're in Portland, check out Floating World. Dave, what did you get at Floating World? I picked up the pencil art of Jeff Darrow. Funny enough, they just mentioned this on Kayfabe this morning. I got yeah. this a few days ago, and Jeff Darrow is hands down one of my favorite illustrators, drawers, artists, people. He, he's just incredible. The first time I saw his art was for a book called Hard Boiled, written by Frank Miller. I'm not even sure when that came out. Like, was it the late 80s or something? Nah. Was it the early 90s? Um, Somewhere in there. Mostly you see his art in comics, and it's been inked. This is all his pencil drawings and it's incredible. Like I can't even wrap my mind around how he approaches some of this stuff. And every page is just exquisite with design and composition and shape. It's just, it's incredible. And I actually have one of Jeff Darrell's original pieces. So this is just kind of like a nice thing to go with it. I love this book so much. I've You'll see things. something new every time you look at his. Yeah, it's like he mentions like the Where's Waldo for comics. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's just so much going on. You can just stare at each page for like 10 minutes and just see new stuff. Another store I can't recommend enough. When we got up to Seattle, I took Dave to the Fantagraphics store, which Fantagraphics publisher, the best cartoonist, independent stuff, period. End of story. Love and Rockets, uh, Eight Ball, guys like Jim Woodring and, mm -hmm. and Wally Wood, EC reprints, Peanuts reprints. Anyway, we went to the Fantagraphics store, which is about the size of this room. Dave, what did you get? I got this book called And Now, Sir is this your missing gonad. And it's a Jim Woodring book. It's it really drew me to this. I, I like Jim Woodring, but this book, how it's put together, it's a, every 30 pages is, a di is like a different cardstock color. Like you have purple, magenta, greens, reds, and blues. And then there's like two different white spot colors on them. And it's just incredible. Like not only is the art amazing and weird, so neat. Yeah. Like the, the way this book is put together as Presentation, presentation is wise, worth, it, uh, worth it alone. It's so cool, and every every page is just so beautiful. Jim Woodring actually lives off the coast of Seattle, and uh, I think in Vashon Island. Yep. Words, and I picked up Red Room Number Three, the Jim Rugg Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles variant cover. I've been looking for this for a while. Mm -hmm. Red Room is by Ed Pisker, Ed Pisker and Jim Rugg, the team behind Cartoonist Escape Fabe. So, you know, just something I was looking for. Got it at cover price, and it's probably selling these days at 30, 40 bucks, but this is going into the personal collection. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to the, the trip. Yeah. Uh, West Coast Defenders, get into Oregon, give us your comics. 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 One of the antique malls we went to, there was, you know, dollar box, dollar box. I am an antique mall. Well, we went to a really fun antique mall in Albany, Oregon, and we were flipping through some books and I found this one book. He found this one book in the same box. And, yeah. Well, this is Electro Assassin number one and Batman 400 by our friend, Bill Sankiewicz. Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz. Bill Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz. Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz. Bill Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz, who? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have that energy right now. I have a lot of energy always, mostly in the morning. It's like 8 o'clock right now. Yeah. A.M. Yeah. Sankowitz. All right. Bill Sankiewicz. This is a book I've been looking for for a while. Um, it's one of my favorite Batman illustrations, period. This book's also cool because it's just like an anthology of tons of different art and stories from artists I really like. I mean, Art Adams is in this. Uh, there's a Bernie Wrightson pinup. Uh, Stephen King does the introduction of that book. Yeah, too. there's just so much cool stuff in this book, and I haven't, I've never read it. I've never had this. So to, to find this was really kind of a, a treat. And I like how the back is also has the art on it. I, I love yeah. this art so much. And then the back is the same thing without all the typography and design on it. So this is just a really cool piece, and I was stoked to get this one. Bill Sankiewicz is no slouch to the world of Daredevil. And this is the first of the Electra Assassin eight part miniseries. Look at that big ass gun. It's comical. It's amazing. It's comical. I I have a copy of this that's beat up, but now I have a really nice copy. One thing I like about this book in this series is like sometimes when you buy a, a second cabbage like cover or something, then the interior art's different by yeah. different artists. Like this book is every page is painted and drawn by some cabbage, and the interiors are equally as amazing and dynamic as the as the cover paintings like every page is just a Sienkiewicz masterpiece it it's, is that run is affordable lots of comic shop, shops have it and it's really easy to come by so it's one you should pick up if you're a Sienkiewicz fan it was a dollar oh it's written by Frank Miller okay oh yeah first stop now let me to 
at a little little antique mall down in uh, the Bay Area. I hit right after I got off my flight. I just found these really cool Mighty Avengers books from Secret Invasion storyline, and they are both homage covers with scrolls. This is the homage to Daredevil number 168, which is the first appearance of Elektra. Hold that image in your mind. You might see it again. And I believe that this is an homage to Avengers number 100. Really cool Alex Ross scroll covers. And those were a dollar. So I picked up these Silver Surfer books, uh, number 13, number 16 from the series in 1968. Um, the Silver Surfer run I'm trying to complete. I, I got like the hardest books to get in this series kind of by accident this summer. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a completist. I want the whole run. So the, the rest of these books are somewhat affordable if you can find them. I got these for a really good price at a really cool comic shop called I Like Comics in Vancouver, Washington. Washington. And uh, yeah, these are actually, these are in really good shape. I love this art so much. Uh, I, I can't wait to get the whole collection. I'm almost about halfway there. So it's just, this is kind of like a little fun personal collection pick up for me, but yeah, these books are just amazing. Super cool. I like how Silver Surfer, after he comes to Earth, he just kind of stays in New York. Yeah, he's just hanging out in New York. He's he's, just this is a cool cover, especially. Yeah, right? what is that? Silver Surfer 16. Yeah, it's uh, Silver Surfer and Memphis Stowe uh, just duking it out on the streets of New York. So I have a rule, as you all know. Dave, what's my rule? When you see Todd, you buy Todd. Buy Todd. And we've got another Quasar, number 14. But you know what? I've been looking for a higher grade copy of this book. This is about as high as I found so far. I found that for a dollar. And see, see Todd by Todd also goes with Wizard Magazines. And, and that's Wizard number 11. I, th I can't believe you don't have that one. I do have this one. Oh. But I bought another one. Okay. Because when you see Todd. Yeah, you buy Todd. Okay, yeah, gotcha. I am looking for Wizard number one. So if anybody's watching this and they want to say, hey, I like this guy. I want him to have all the McFarlane stuff. You can just mail it to me. So, anywho. See Todd by Todd. Uh, and at that same antique mall, I found this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number seven. I came into some low number Turtles books with you yeah. on the first Dave Avengers trip. I got a Turtles two, three, and four at a steal, and they're all first prints. And I kept falling into more Turtles books because, let's face it, I like Turtles. And I decided I'm gonna put together an original Turtles run. Yeah. And I'm, I'm working on it. I'm more than halfway there. Personal goals. Personal goals. Yeah. I like turtles. All right, Dave, what is your next book? Um, I got this Tales to Astonish number 60. Um, I got this at the secret spot. Um, nothing super key about this book. I just love the cover. It's a Kirby cover. Mm -hmm. um, there's Ditko art in there. Mm -hmm. It's. I think this book reprints Hulk number six or something. Just a really cool cover. I got it at a really good price. I was like, ah, I like it. I'm gonna look mm. at it, I'm gonna read it, and I'm gonna enjoy this old art. So there was a store in Eugene, Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a record store, but they did have comics. I have no attachment to DC, but this is um, DC Superstars of Magic, number 11, starring Zatanna. Once again, not a huge attachment to DC besides Batman, but I thought this was a pretty cool cover. I bought it for $4. It's like a 50 or $60 book. Yeah. And Zatanna's one of those characters I hope that will probably come into their TV movie universe at some point because it just kind of matches with Sandman and Constantine and all that stuff. But I thought that was pretty neat. I like the little red demons around yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. I, I, I'm a sucker for when like they take the black line work out of comic art uh, and like color it something. So color. like with this, with the... The demons, like the dark line work is like now like a, like a muted purple or red. And then like the demons are also red. It's just, it's just a cool look yeah. on the cover for me. They do like quite a bit sometimes. It's easy. Like also the, the design of this cover kind of reminds me of like an old 60s like concert poster. Yeah. You see something like this and you're like, yeah, I got to have it. What number is that? 113. Another book I got, this is the last book that I got that I really liked, is uh, Daredevil 168. This is the first Elektra in comics. I'm not a huge Daredevil fan, but I've come across like all the Daredevil keys in yeah. this summer. And I got this at a really, really, really amazing price. So I had to, I couldn't pass it up. First Elektra, you know what the funny thing about this is Dave's brother might actually murder him for this comic. Yeah, Dan, my brother Dan's a huge 
Daredevil, Daredevil fan, so maybe yeah. I can trade this to him for something. But you know, it, I just it's one of those things where like I can't pass yeah. out like, well, this stuff and you come across it, you know? Right? Like you got the the first bullseye yeah. over the summer. You just got the first Electra, and it's like besides having Daredevil number one, first appearance of Daredevil, like those are the two biggest Daredevil books, probably like, at it, least in the in this in this series. Probably. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. important like to the character. Yeah, and it's in really really good shape, and it's a new stand. I don't care about the whole new stand thing too much, but uh, I'm pretty sure that her name is E L E K T R A, but it's misspelled. It is misspelled. Yeah, yeah. I did not. I never knew that. Yeah, amazing. I knew that book was in the secret spot, but um, once Dave saw it and he wanted to buy it, you know, I kind of did that Homer Simpson and I you went to the bushes. Went backwards. to the bushes, but. So my secret little spot, which no, I will never tell you. I got this Strange Tales 101. Classic cover, Jack Kirby. This is the retelling of the Fantastic Four origin, but even more importantly, this is the first Strange Tales starring the Human Torch. Mm. And the Human Torch being one of the oldest uh, superheroes, period. Big book, Strange Tales. You can't go wrong with buying old Strange Tales. Rewind. <laughs> Namor, the Submariner, number one. Hi. I have a plan to catch at some point. Sometimes <laughs> this happens where I just kind of like forget how to fucking talk. The significance of this book is not just the fact that I got a Namor, the Submariner, number one. It's that I got a Namor, the Submariner, entire Silver Age run, one to 72. Yeah. Every single Namor book. Now... Some of you might say, oh, it's Namor. He's more like Laymor. <laughs> but he's Marvel's Aquaman. We all know that. But he's cooler. Look, he, he, you know, the cool thing about Namor, he's kind of a dick. Is he? Yeah, he's like a villain, but he's not. And then he's a villain, but he's not. When he, they first meet the Fantastic Four, he's a villain. Like, they fight Namor. Mm -hmm. Kind of a classic cover. Some of the other covers are amazing. The John Buscema... Um, number eight. Number is, eight is, is really cool. It's yeah. fantastic. The Tiger Shark cover. Oh, the Tiger number. Shark is probably the best cover out of the whole run. Five is the first Tiger Shark. Yeah. Six is probably the best cover. And uh, so I have them all now. But I wanted to just kind of use this as the, uh, like, umbrella to show that this was my big pickup for the trip. I'm stoked. Yeah. I, I had a great time. Did you have a great time? I had a great time. Yeah. You know, comics aside, it's just fun to drive up the West uh, Coast and just yeah. see all the uh, cool things that we saw. <laughs> yeah, like this stores. And it's funny because we hit some stores that we had hit on the first trip and they weren't as good the second time around. But then we found new places to go to. It's, it's fun to just adventure on. I think one thing that we do well is we just aimlessly drive and go, oh, that looks like a cool spot. Let's stop there. And we just like that become that's part of like the adventure, you know, just like what's yeah. in this shop? What can we find? Like, what box can we find under a table somewhere that has some stuff? Flip through it, and like, lo and behold, you just find some like cool books. Yeah, it's good. just it's ex it's exciting. So that's one thing I like about the trip is like the adventure aspect about it. And some great conversation with people that work at shops, and just seeing like you know what we see at I like comics with the yeah. Avengers number one, like all these crazy graded books that we yeah. can't afford, but they're nice to it, look at. It's fun to see. yeah, it's totally fun and surreal to see like a stack of Hulk one eighty ones, like a stack. Yeah, and you're just like okay, that's probably like a hundred grand in comics. <laughs> I mean, it just it's like when you go to a museum and you see like a treasure chest behind like a you know glass case right. or something like that or you see like four picassos or four da vinci's yeah like, yeah you're just like wow but you're right though meeting the shop owners is always nice because they're they're obviously fans of comics and just to talk nerdy comic talk to people at different shops and every, every shop is kind of specialized mm -hmm. you have like your fan of graphics guy who just like likes all the weird like, obscure stuff yeah. and it's just nice to pick his brain about like what he's finding and like what he's collecting versus the guy who works like you know a big superhero comic book store and figure out what he's doing so it's just right. it's just fun like the whole like conversation thing is fun yeah and we we did our uh first ever combined claim sale where dave had some prints and art and we sold some books so that was a lot of fun and yeah stay tuned for whatever the next one's gonna be and um this is our third trip but now we just need to branch out and go somewhere else and see what the comics are like in the midwest or the south or yeah yeah alaska we will find the three comic book stores in alaska alaska comics that being said like, follow, comment, subscribe, send nice letters. Find me at Wizard Number One. If you see us in the wild, high fives are always fun. Just or watch. social distance high fives. I'm I'm cool with that yeah. too. And if Simon Bisley is watching this, uh, come hang out. <laughs> uh, and if you know where Jeff Darrow is right now, tell him to come hang out. Getting together and forming the powerful 
West Coast Avengers. <laughs> we are going to get on with our day, go have some egg sandwiches. But first, we have to figure out something. We've got a young boy too, which is the first appearance of Prophet. Wow. And the first appearance of Shadowhawk. And I really want that book. And I really want that book. It's only one book. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing about us. We're from, we love the 90s stuff. And now it looks like we're, um, we're going to have to uh, figure out a way to settle this. Last Coast Avengers. Are you looking for some comics, dear? 